Hi, everyone. This is Kwabi. Welcome to another episode of 50 Shades of Over 50. And I have a guest today, not a female guest. <laughs> I have a male guest today. His name is John Windsor. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Yay. Thank you Yay. so much for accepting my invitation to come out here. I appreciate yep. it. So the first question I always ask all my guests, I'm going to ask to you right now is how old are you? I'm 70 years old. Yay! Yay! Not 70 yeah. years young. That's a whole other story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love how you frame it as bold. So I could say yeah. I'm 70 years bold. Yes. Yes. Love that. Love that. So I met John at a conference in November, a coaching conference, actually. Yeah. And um, he does something similar to what I do. And we got talking. I was really excited. And he has this amazing book that we're going to talk about in, in, a, in a few minutes. But I'm so glad that we connected. Um, yeah, me too. Really, yeah, because you just me never too. know when you start speaking with people, you uncover so much. So I'm glad that we made that connection. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm so... I just love all the things you're doing, Kwabi. Uh, your <laughs> videos and the podcasts and things Thanks. like that. You are an incredible example. Thank you. Uh, I'm trying. Um, I'm doing my best. How to be as you get older? No, it's just I'm so delighted. I, yeah, and I'm so I'm also excited that there are more of us doing this now. I yes. think we do need more people doing this so that we yes. can share that. You know what? When you get older, it doesn't have to be a death sentence. Like, where right. did that come from? You know? Yeah. yeah. So tell me, for you though, and I really want to hear this because from the male perspective, it might be slightly different. For you, as you got older. How was that for you? Was it like, oh, no, or it was like, OK, this is it. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, so I got into coaching six years ago and mm -hmm. did a lot of work on myself, and that changed my world. So let me dial back to I'll tell you, ageism has been showing up in my life mm -hmm. since my oh God, maybe forever. Uh, my first <laughs> career was as an actor. And mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you did say that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on Broadway and then a little bit in LA and boy, age is just like, they get really precise about these things. I was always cast mm -hmm. younger than me, than mm -hmm. my actual age mm -hmm. didn't bother me. Yeah. But uh, the first time, and actually in my book, which we'll talk about, I have a chapter on oh shit moments in aging. Yeah. When I mm -hmm. had these realizations. And the first one was uh, when I started business school at age 32 mm -hmm. and I realized, oh, I'm, one of the oldest members of the class. <laughs> uh, and there were a few people that looked at me kind of askance, but ultimately became, you know, nothing. Mm. Um, and then I, uh, after business school, went to New York, tried to get into advertising. And they said, well, we don't think you could work for somebody younger than you. This hmm. is before all these laws were in place about yes. uh, ageism. But then like, uh, I, I worked in New York. Uh, I got transferred to London. I was working mm -hmm. there, doing great things, met my wife. And uh, and then we moved uh, to California, to Silicon yes. Valley. Yeah. And when it came time for me to go find a job, because she said, I'll support you for a year, then you get a job and support me for a year. <laughs> um, and it lasted three years. Mm -hmm. And I wrote two novels and I had the extraordinary opportunity to be the stay at home parent with two babies. It was oh, just nice. so precious. Um, but eventually my wife said, okay, time to change roles. And I, <laughs> I couldn't argue. Um, but she thought that I was like 44 at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, she thought, oh, he'll never be able to get a job at that age. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I did get a job quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then a bunch of other things happened. Other careers moved to Boulder, Colorado. Uh, and there was another occasion where, but now, by now I'm about 60 and I shut down a software mm -hmm. business that I had had. Mm -hmm. And my wife thought I should go get a job as a bus driver mm -hmm. uh, because she thought that was the only job that I could get, that I, mm. I wouldn't be aged out of. Um, and I had no idea. And, you know, I, I was perfect for jobs that I was applying for yeah. and wasn't getting selected. Ages what did you think was else. going on, though? What did you think was going on at that time when you weren't getting the jobs that you knew you were qualified for? Great question. Uh, typically, what happens is uh, there's an expectation. I mean, I had been a VP of marketing for a Silicon mm. Valley startup. 
Yeah. Uh, I had had a nice, healthy salary. Uh, so they go, I think what happens is people probably look at it and go, well, okay, he's got an MBA from a top school. He's done all of this, but he's older. He's probably not as hip. Uh, he's probably going to cost too much. Mm. Probably wouldn't fit in with our culture. Let's just mm. look at somebody else. Yeah. Don't know. I didn't have the conversations, but yeah. <clears throat> that does happen. Mm. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, ultimately, I didn't become a bus driver. I didn't get <laughs> one of those jobs mm -hmm. and ultimately found coaching. And it has been the perfect yeah. synthesis. It's my sixth career. Uh, it's wow. the perfect synthesis of everything I've done before. And wow. um, yeah, so I'm glad those other things didn't happen, even though it hurt at the time. And even though there was pressure on the home front <clears throat> because I, yeah. you know, was struggling to find work for a while. Um, and how did you find coaching? So my wife <laughs> became a coach, mm -hmm. uh, about 10 years ago and did it for a while, stopped for a while. I got back to it. She's got a nice thriving business now. Mm -hmm. And as I was, after I shut down my software business and I had about a year of looking for jobs and doing, uh, consulting gigs on the side and everything. And I suddenly looked at coaching from a new perspective. Uh, and she had done a particular exercise with me that I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, <laughs> and then when I got into it, it was like, oh, okay, I've found my place. Wow. And went through a lot of uh, struggles to, to just burst through ways that I was holding myself back and, mm. and not showing up authentically and all mm. these kind of things. You know, you asked about the male perspective. Well, one of the things with the male perspective is we have to come in in a certain way. We mm -hmm. have to be like this. And um, and we're not completely ourselves. Yeah. And we don't necessarily bring all that we have to bring to the table. So mm -hmm. I had to strip away stuff and I got like run over by a truck, you know, figuratively and what have you. Yeah. I'm better for all of that stuff. And and then I started, so this is a segue into aging and my yeah. focus on it. So I started, I started coaching and then I ended up um, in 2019, God, almost four years ago, I <laughs> had this particular cohort of mm -hmm. clients who yeah. were uh, both men and women mm -hmm. who were late fifties, early sixties, mm -hmm. really successful careers top, top performers looking at what was coming next, either because mm. they'd been doing it for 30 years mm. and, or they knew that they were going to get, you know, not included in meetings and ultimately pushed to the oh, side. Right. Um, so, but what do you do, right? When you're a high school senior and you're going, what am I going to do with my life? There are resources. Yes. When you're 60 and you go, what am I going to do with my life now? There aren't those resources other than, True. you know, career coaching or something. True. Yeah. Um, so I had this one new client and man, she was bursting with life until she said the word retire. Mm. And then it was like watching a balloon deflate. Aww. And I said, can I swear on this program? I already did once. Um, <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> I don't, but that's fine. You can't. <laughs> I you, want you, you to can, be completely you comfortable. You can bleep it out. I, I want people to be comfortable, but it is the title mm -hmm. of my book. Ultimately. Yeah, I know. Right? So <laughs> she, she deflated, you know, like oh, retire. And I said, wow, this word is getting in the way. We find it, we need to find a new way to talk about this time in your life. Yeah. You know, we need to say fuck retirement and find mm. a new way to talk about this time in yeah. your life. And yeah. bing, this bell went off. And I said out loud, wow, that'd make a great title for a book. <laughs> and and ultimately I did write that book. And that's a whole mm. long journey. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've written a this book. It. There it is. is it. My book. Love it. Um yes. and uh the thing is, the more I focused on it. Uh, Kwabi, and seeing how much damage we do to ourselves, how much we oh, limit ourselves. You hit, can you just repeat that for people? Because sometimes we think it's other people and society, but yeah, we do that. We do to it ourselves. to ourselves. And the thing is, we've yes. been programmed, most of us, not all of us, but most of us have been programmed since like age three. Yeah. To if hold, not younger. if not younger, to hold older people in, yeah. in disregard as. Yeah. Freya, I mean, the thing that just fries me, there's a new thing for all the work to try and, and make ageism less of a thing. Yeah. There's like, uh, in grade schools, they're having 100 year old person day. 
Mm -hmm. And they invite the parents to dress their, you know, first graders or whatever age they're doing it as old people. Mm -hmm. And so every stereotype, every trope is wheeled out. And mm -hmm. the parents have such glee. And what it does is it cements in little kids' heads yeah. that, oh, old is walking like exactly. this. Exactly. And, and then how about we redefine what that means? I mean, that's exactly. my goal. It's yeah. like, let's redefine what it means. Because I was reading an article somewhere and they said, you know, even on TV, when you think about the shows you've watched in the past, like even shows you watch growing up, they hardly had like grandparents shown as strong figures yeah. in the shows. It, it yeah. just was, you know, it didn't. And then, so how do you have these positive images of older people when all you would see was you show them as frail? And I'll be honest with you, guys, you guys even have it better. If you go on Google and type yeah. in middle age, yeah, the images of women, at least the guys, they show you guys looking like debonair. I would say they they make the men look they look like John Clo George Clooney. But yeah. the women, it's yeah. like, what is what is what is this? It like, is horrible. It's it, it's way out of balance. And there was a quote and forgive me, I can't remember mm -hmm. the actress's name. I try and say actor, but mm -hmm. in this case, it just helps to distinguish. This. Yes, of course. Yes. It's easier than saying female actor. Um, yeah. So apologies if that offends anyone. Yeah. Um, but it was like um, Sandra Bullock or someone like that saying, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it was Andy McDowell uh, saying, why is it an issue if my hair is gray? Yes. And, and it's not for George Clooney. Exactly. It's That's the thing. It's like double standard. And it's it's already rough for us as females. And yeah. then you add that layer on top of it. Like, yeah. really? Yeah, like, it's true. Why is that? Yeah, no, my heart, my heart goes out to all of you. Um, so it's, um, it's interesting. And, and I know things are changing, but we still have so much work to do. Yeah. And I think in some part, we have to do it on ourselves too, because I think sometimes Absolutely. we um, sometimes accept some of these stereotypes without even realizing it. Like one of the yeah. ones, one of the big ones that I particularly like to, you know, talk about a lot is when people make statements like, oh, 50 is a new 40 or 60 is a new 50. I am like, that does not, you know, that is not a positive statement by any way you look at it, because that's really insinuating that younger is better right 100 percent. you know and so yeah. statements like that that they throw around it's like we need to reject statements like that like yeah no. yeah and like oh he's 80 years young see i don't Push like it. statements like that because yeah. you never say 16 years young you never say yeah. five years young you say 16 years old for yeah. and they're five years old no matter how young you are and so i don't to me, those statements, it's like, no, no, let's let's call it what it is. And let's just change the whole view of aging as opposed to these little Absolutely. statements here and there. Like, Absolutely. let's change this whole view about how yeah. we are regarded. And you know what? A lot of us are still like, we still have a lot of energy. We still want to do all these amazing things. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. I've been collecting stories. I find them almost daily. Uh, isn't it amazing? Of people doing amazing things. I, isn't it just amazing when you see those stories? It's like, yes, it just, for me, it just lights me up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, in the book, I have stories about Opal Lee. Who... I love, and you know, I'm so glad you shared that because I'm going to be honest, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Didn't know about that. So Opal Lee, who was this very nice woman living in, grew up in Fort Worth and, um, uh, I think it's Fort Worth, Houston, in Texas, yes. and you know, loved the Juneteenth uh, celebrations when she was kid, but the, a kid, but they were local affairs. Mm -hmm. And she grew up, she got married, she was a teacher, she retired at fifty-five. And it was just, you know, doing things to support the community yeah. and be involved right. in activities. And it wasn't until her late eighties, right? In fact age 89 that she I said know. Juneteenth has to be a national, national holiday. holiday on par with uh, Independence Day, okay. July 4th. I know. And she made it happen. I know. And I five years know. later, took her into her 90s. She was sitting there in the front row when Joe Biden signed it into law. Look at that. She got the first, you know, they always use lots of pens. She got the yeah, first pen. The first pen. I'm like, yeah. that? And so when you're, if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I can't do any more, like 89. 
89. The other woman's story that intrigued me was um, Shirley Curry. Shirley Curry. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You being I'm... a social media person. <laughs> I love that because she is doing what most people, probably the age, probably for that particular group, is probably people in their 20s. Yeah. You know, doing yeah, that kind of work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, what's crazy <laughs> is because there's this presumption that older people, and, and I hope everybody listening to this realizes we're not saying old people. Older. Uh, exactly. Older. Yes. Yeah, and, and we can get back to that, I hope, because that's just, uh, yes. it's actually my mission um, yes. around the word old. But anyway, Shirley Curry, older people are presumed to be technically incompetent exactly right? we're not we're not <laughs> uh and and so this lady shirley curry had a nice you know simple life she had children she raised them she worked at kmart and other places like that and after she retired her son introduced her to computer games yeah and so she started playing i forget what she started with but mm -hmm. then she moved to skyrim yeah and she had so much fun doing it. And from somewhere, I got the idea, I guess, because she had seen lots of YouTube videos, videos of people playing Skyrim. She started at age 75. Yeah. She posted her first video of her fighting this big A spider. spider. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and she got two million, million views. views. That's outrageous. Nobody posts a, and that a first was gaming. video. And that was gaming. Gaming. And and she's made a new career out of it. And she has to be making six figures doing it. Of course, it. just from doing and that. And she's having fun doing it too. Like having a blast. And she calls everybody her adoration. grandchildren. Yeah, that's what she, she calls everyone <laughs> that she plays with. Like, I mean, that's so cool. And she's yeah. um, she's phenomenal at it. Like they call yeah. it like she's like, a you know, like an icon, you know, yeah. of gaming. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but see, <laughs> but she was open to the idea, which is, yeah. which we, we as, in the, we need to be open. Um, yeah. Rather than giving in to the fact that, oh, you know, I'm old and I really can't do this. Says who? Yeah. Says who? You know. Yeah. You know, that's fascinating because uh, my wife, who is 61, mm -hmm. um, is Swiss, grew up. I think she probably came out of the womb on skis um, <laughs> and uh, very active and all of that. And so uh, a year ago, she was uh, doing a hike with a friend. And part of this very long thing called the Colorado Trail. Uh, so it's up high. It can be grueling and this and that and the yeah. other. And she slipped as she was going up this kind of uh, rocky thing, you know, with lots of gravel and stuff. She slipped and she injured her wrist. And that night we had dinner with friends and the she was describing what happened. And this uh, woman from the couple said, well, see, a 60 year old shouldn't be doing those things. Oh, please give yeah. me all the, give me all the scars. I'll take the scars. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But see, but that's the thing. I don't want to live a safe life. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. There you go. So it's, it's funny because as I was, you know, getting ready to have this chat, um, one theme that really came out that I was hoping we could talk about, and maybe we could yes, spend a little time right yes. now, is the idea of aging gracefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you feel about that idea? Okay, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. I, I prefer to say age boldly. I'm like, I'm serious. Because, because yeah. I mean, gracefully, I'm like, I'm not a big fan of that statement. I would prefer to say age boldly. Because gracefully almost means that you have to be careful. You have to play it safe. And listen, aging doesn't come in a one size fits all, you know? Yeah. Do yeah. it your way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the other thing for me about aging gracefully is that uh, it feels outer directed. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. That, that yeah. you're making choices that will be acceptable. Yes. To other people. Yes, and I, I think agree. you and I are both in alignment about screw yeah. that, no. do whatever the hell you want. Exactly. Like, I don't need those rules. Those rules might not apply to me. Those might not be the rules I want to follow. Yeah. And yeah. so you're right. Aging gracefully kind of implies that, in my opinion. So, yeah. And, yeah. and if you're intentional about it, if you're doing it for you because it makes you feel more heart centered or whatever else, that's great. 
but do it for you, not for someone else. That's, and that's the key right there. Like make sure it's aligned with what you truly want and not yeah. because you want to please other people. Right. Because I think for a lot of us, we've done that for so long. It's now time yeah. to please us. Something yeah. in your book that I wanted to ask you about that I thought was kind of interesting, hope I didn't lose it, was the idea, oh, when you talked about the goals. I love the thing you talked about where you said you have to have, being goals as well. Yes. Talk a little bit about, I love that. Talk, yeah. talk a lot so, about, talk a little thanks. bit about that. Um, mm -hmm. So especially, you know, still in January, there'll probably yeah, be most, exactly. most people who set resolutions for 2023 are already rethinking them, but um, goals can be <laughs> wonderful. Goals can yes. be animating things, right? They give us a direction so that we know it's like, mm. oh, okay, I'm going to go on this trip. That's where I want to end up. That's yeah. useful. Yeah. But they're, there's a there can be downsides, dark sides mm. to goals. If as we're working towards them, we look at it and go, gee, I'm not there yet. And we mm -hmm. we start to um yeah. to realize our lack or our insufficiency or something like that. Uh, but let's say we do get to that goal. A lot of people then it becomes this neuroses. Okay, what's the next goal and the next goal and the next goal? And that's great if it keeps you animated and you feel you have a sense of purpose, but you have to be careful about these other things. So in the book, I talk about how about if we have being goals? How yes. do you want to be in the moment? Mm. How do you want to be when you reach whatever it is that you think you want to do? And gee, why not be like that right now? It'll yes. help you get there even faster and easier. And you're always a success. Yes. There's no doubt about it. And it, it frees you up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I love that when I was, re I was like, oh, that just, just really resonated with me. I'm like, I can get down with a concept like that. Yeah. Truly loved it. So yeah. tell me who are the kind of clients that you work with currently, like male, female, certain age? Or Both. I, I tend to have more men, but I, I have mm -hmm. a fair number of women and I, mm -hmm. Just I, I was raised by women. I had no mm -hmm. positive male figures in my life. So I mm -hmm. have great uh, affection and uh, what have you. Um, so but I, I tend to work with people uh, 50 plus. OK, who are trying to figure out what's next. In fact, mm -hmm. it's fascinating when the book came out, uh, a friend of some friends of ours got a copy in the first month it was out. And in yeah. one month's time, she read it. She started divorce proceedings, uh, you know, from the stale marriage. Yeah, had moved to Indiana and had already uh, uh, bought a house. Wow! In a month's time. It was just like it, I'm sure the book was that she was just she wasn't totally she was done, there, but right? this was like oh, the catalyst. She this, read this yeah, and she's this like, "This was the thing that gave her the push." And it's like, yeah, I'm not going to waste yeah. any more time. And really, all of you listening, listen, do not waste any more time. Go ahead yeah. and. Take that trip. You want to take a trip, write the book, you know, start yeah. the new relationship End the relationship, whatever it is like, because yeah. yeah. you just don't know tomorrow is not guaranteed. Like, really, it isn't. Yeah. And wouldn't you want to start this next chapter like now? Like, why are you waiting? Yeah. And even if you're in a situation, Kwavi, those are all wonderful. And thank you for saying all that. It's beautiful. Yeah. And if you're in a situation right now where you can't just drop everything and and apply the boldness factor, the quasi yes. boldness factor right now. <laughs> it's never too late. It's never too late. It isn't. It isn't. You know, you're not so, too, it's not too late and you're not too old. I keep saying that. Yeah, There's yeah. always a way in which you can change it around to make it work for you. A friend of mine, I was speaking with her the other day, one of her clients, 91 years old, just started a business at 91 perfect. years old. Perfect. Perfect. Like, I love it. That just excites me to no end. Like, yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm just grateful for these types of conversations because we're helping to change this negative narrative around aging. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you so much for coming. This oh, I know is going to inspire so many people and who knows, someone might be making some changes just based on our conversation. <laughs> and to me, that's a great addition. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank you so much for coming. Oh, thank you. Claudia. Truly appreciate it. Yeah. And for those listening, I hope you enjoyed this conversation and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of 50 Shades of Over 50. Awesome. Bye. 
Thank you so much for watching an episode of 50 Shades of Over 50. I invite you to join our online community called Flourish, a community created exclusively for women in their 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond. A place where you'll get to pursue your passion and live your purpose with other like-minded women. If you're not sure what your purpose or passion is, not to worry. I share tools to help you with that. Flourish is the best place to learn, grow, and have fun if you're in your 50s and beyond. Go to www.kwabi.tv slash flourish to learn more.